Studying the ancient philosophies and esoteric knowledge is not like listening to a lecture in an establishment educational institute. You cannot acquire a deeper understanding of this esoteric knowledge by just memorizing it and repeating it back as you do when you learn in school. Learning in this way is merely keeping the information on the surface in your head instead of allowing the knowledge to permeate through on a deeper level to your heart and become wisdom. Helena Blavatsky addresses this in her book, The Voice of the Silence, where she goes on to say, Then, from the heart, that power shall rise into the sixth, the middle region, the place between thine eyes, when it becomes the breath of the one soul, the voice which filleth all, thy master's voice, Tis only then thou canst become a walker of the sky, who treads the winds above the waves, whose step touches not the waters. The philosopher Seneca also relates the difference between memorizing and knowing. Remembering is one thing, knowing is something else. Remembering is keeping track of something you have committed to memory. Knowing, by contrast, is making all those things your own, not having to depend on a model or to keep looking to your teacher for instructions. Knowledge is knowing, belief is believing. When you understand these teachings to the level required, they are no longer a belief that has to be remembered. They become part of you and you know. Just like you don't need to remember how to breathe or how to see or hear, they are just part of who you are. This is what the attainment of wisdom is when it becomes more than just belief. This is why a deep understanding of hermetic science is absolutely essential for any serious student of the ancient philosophies and esoteric knowledge. The seven hermetic principles can be viewed as the foundation upon which your path back to the truth of your divine nature will be built. However, you must begin your education again as a completely blank canvas. Any preconceived beliefs or dogmas will be nothing but roadblocks to your discovery of truth, so must be removed. Ralph Waldo Trine acknowledged this when he said, He who would enter into the realm of wisdom must first divest himself of all intellectual pride, prejudices, Preconceived opinions and beliefs always stand in the way of true wisdom. Conceited opinions are always suicidal in their influences. They bar the door to the entrance of truth. A student embarking on the road to attaining an understanding of esoteric wisdom should look to the symbolism of the fool tarot card, for that is where the seeker must begin this journey of discovery back to self and truth. The seven principles of hermetic science are what the student will use to weigh and measure all information that crosses their path. This is essential in a time when there is so much disinformation being relayed by those who appear to be in possession of truth. You must trust your own intellect above all. Even those who have impressive followings or are esteemed amongst their peers as successful authors or speakers. Returning to the basics also means returning to the ancient texts and no longer requiring some academic to interpret them for you. When you have the tools, you can interpret them for yourself and trust in what your intellect is revealing to you. However, be warned, if you are seeking knowledge to elevate your position in society, or to benefit financially, you will never be granted access to the hidden truths you seek. The Hermetic Arcanum alludes to this when it relates that The light of this knowledge is the gift of God, which by his will he bestoweth upon whom he pleaseth. Let none therefore set himself to the study hereof, until having cleared and purified his heart, he devote himself holy unto God, and be emptied of all affection and desire unto the impure things of this world. 
The great philosopher Paracelsus related that all wisdom is revealed to us through our connection to the divine mind. He states this in his manuscript on the foundation of wisdom, where he goes on to say, Those who believe they can learn anything without the assistance of God will fall into adultery, superstition and error. They may obtain great names in the world and be admired by the ignorant, but their intellect is repulsed from the light and will end in darkness. The art of deceiving and disputing, sophisticating, perverting and misrepresenting truths may be learned in schools, but the power to recognise and follow the truth cannot be conferred by academical degrees. It comes only from God. Manly P. Hall also goes on to say, As the great Mamonides so wisely pointed out, the moral parts of religions are suited to the majority of men. The philosophical parts are suited to the few who have given their lives to such studies, and the spiritual parts are reserved to the very few whom God himself shall select from the number of the learned. We can see that God, the mental creator, is addressed in the first principle of hermetics, the principle of the mental universe. Yet interestingly, most modern New Age teachings do not speak of God at all, and if they do, they reduce God to some type of random energy. However, God cannot be reduced to just energy, for that does not explain how divine law comes to be manifest in creation, and even in your physical form, by way of the golden mean ratio. And if God is just some consciousness floating out there somewhere, as most modern New Age teachings espouse, then where there is thought, there must be a thinker. In the Divine Pymander by Hermes Trismegistus, we find that the existence of a creator is indeed addressed in this paragraph. See how many arts in one matter, and how many works in one superscription, and all exceedingly beautiful, and all done in measure, and yet all differing. Who hath made all these things? What mother, what father, save only God that is not manifest, that made all things by his own will? And no man says that a statue or an image is made without a carver or a painter? And was this workmanship made without a workman? O oh, great blindness, O oh, great impiety, O oh, great ignorance, never, O oh, son Tat, canst thou deprive the workmanship of the workman. Rather, it is the best name of all the names of God to call him the Father of all. For so he is alone, and this is his work to be the Father. The principle of vibration relates how the mental becomes matter. Everything we see around us is made of matter vibrating in different octaves to create our physical world. This principle explains how God's mental projection is expressed and manifest into material creation. Most modern New Age teachings do not address destiny, yet this is clearly shown in the hermetic principle of cause and effect, where it relates that chance is but a law not recognised, and therefore everything is destined. This principle reveals that every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause, everything happens according to law, chance is but a name for law not recognised, there are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Epictetus stated, Events do not just happen, but arrive by appointment. Voltaire said, Chance is a word void of sense. Nothing can exist without a cause. And Marcus Aurelius told us, Everything that happens, happens as it should, and if you observe carefully, you will find this to be so. So each soul is not just creating their own desired reality, but partaking in the Creator's mental projection and has the gift of free will to choose between the destined paths that already lay before them. But be warned, the higher road back to your divine nature 
is always the harder path of most resistance. The path of ease is the most attractive, and the path the crowd will choose. This is why the card of the wisdom seeker, in search of truth and himself, is symbolised by the hermit tarot card. Another subject not addressed in many modern New Age teachings is the cycle in which mankind exists, known as the Great Year. This cycle of higher and lower ages can be found related in the ancient texts and mythologies of almost every culture, yet its importance is disregarded in most modern New Age teachings. However, if this cycle is not acknowledged, then the student will continue to be completely ignorant to the greater influences under which they are governed. The cycle of the great year is related to the hermetic principle of rhythm and the principle of correspondence. Paracelsus stated, Truly it has been said that there is nothing new under the sun, for knowledge is revealed and is submerged again, even as a nation rises and falls. Here is a system tested throughout the ages, but lost again and again by ignorance and prejudice in the same way that great nations have risen and fallen and been lost to history beneath the desert sands and in the ocean depths. The Hermetic Principle of Polarity shows us that everything cannot always be positive and that we have to address both sides of creation, the light and the dark. Only acknowledging positive things and ignoring everything negative is actually working to hinder a soul's progress of growth and a deeper understanding of our existence. In fact, hermetic science teaches us that love and hate are just two extremes of the same thing, with many varying degrees between them. Nobody can be all love all the time, and pretending you are always happy is actually just being disingenuous. What the student must strive for is balance, and honesty in everything, and that includes acknowledging both the positive and negative which exists within ourselves and in creation. The principle of gender teaches us that gender manifests on all the causal planes, and we should embrace the unique attributes and differences within each gender, because in this way, when we bring them together, we harmonize the whole. Some people have fallen into the trap of thinking that the esoteric knowledge relates to the male chokma and female vina being connected to the left and right hemispheres of the brain. However, if we apply a deeper understanding of hermetic science and address the principle of correspondence, we know that everything must manifest on all three causal planes, which are the mental, the spiritual and the physical. Therefore, if we apply this principle to the belief that each human is mentally male and female in one body, and spiritually male and female in one body, then that would translate physically to all humans being hermaphrodites, and we know this is not the case. Each soul has the ability to master both intellects of chokma wisdom and binar understanding, but the female will always be created with more binar intellect, and the male will always be created with more chokma. Once the two genders work together and harmonize mentally, then both will master the latent intellectual quality within each of them. This is also why the symbol of the yin-yang is shown with a small degree of each in the other, for we each carry a part of our twinned soul within us. Manly P. Hall also explains how the intellects of each gender need to be brought into harmony in the secret teachings of all ages, where he relays, Through spiritual unfoldment and knowledge imparted by the mysteries, however, the latent element in each nature is gradually brought into activity and ultimately the human being thus regains sexual equilibrium. By this theory, woman is elevated from the position of being man's errant part to one of complete equality. 
from this point of view marriage is regarded as a companionship in which two complete individualities manifesting opposite polarities are brought into association that each may thereby awaken the qualities latent in the other and thus assist in the attainment of individual completeness the hermetic and kabbalah texts also relate to us that every soul is created whole and then splits just before being manifest into the material body on the physical plane however even though the male and female souls are separated on a material level they are still joined on a spiritual level and their destinies throughout their earthly incarnations will always be entwined the hermetic texts of the divine pymander relate when that period was fulfilled the bond of all things was loosed and untied by the will of god for all living creatures being hermaphroditical or male and female were loosed and untied together with man and so the males were apart by themselves and the females were likewise while the kabbalah texts go on to say as they set up from their place above each soul is male and female as one only as they descend to this world do they part each to its own side and then it is the one above who unites them again this is his exclusive domain for he alone knows which soul belongs to which and how they must reunite i have provided these brief explanations of the seven hermetic principles to reveal just how little the modern New Age teachings address the subject of the esoteric using the actual knowledge directly sourced from the sacred sciences themselves. This is why every serious student of the esoteric knowledge should trust in their own intellect and be well versed in the hermetic sciences, using them as a way to navigate through all the white noise and disinformation that is rife in the modern New Age community. Teachers of the esoteric should always be about the knowledge and not their popularity. They will not tell you what is pleasing to the ear because real truth in these times is not pleasing. Another good way to gauge the authenticity of somebody instructing others in esoteric knowledge is to see if their motivation is to gain financially from relaying this information. This example from Epictetus gives us an understanding of what the role of a philosopher and teacher of esoteric knowledge actually is. Does a philosopher solicit an audience? As the sun draws sustenance to itself, that is how the true philosopher attracts people who stand in need of help. What sort of doctor is it that invites patients to be treated by him? And yet I hear that in Rome now even the doctors advertise the patients. In my day, it was the other way around. I invite you to come and hear how unwell you are, how you care for everything except what counts, how you don't know good from evil, that you are unhappy and unsuccessful. What a charming invitation! And yet, if the philosopher does not make such an impression with his speech, it's dead, and the speaker might as well be too. Rufus used to say, If you have nothing better to do than praise me for it, then my speech was a failure. He used to address us in such a way as to make everyone sitting there suppose that someone had informed on them. That's how well he intuited the truth and how vividly he evoked for each one of us our private faults. Friends, the school of a philosopher is a hospital. When you leave, you should have suffered, not enjoyed yourself, because you enter not in a state of health, but with a dislocated shoulder, it may be, or an abscess, a fistula or head pain so am i supposed to sit down alongside you and recite clever thoughts and phrases so that patients applaud and leave with their shoulder in the same condition as they were admitted their head their abscess their fistula the same tell me has anyone who has ever heard you read or discourse felt self-remorse as a result or experienced self-realization or afterwards left thinking the philosopher touched a nerve there i can't go on acting as i have as epictetus relates 
The philosophies are not here to provide the seeker what is pleasing to the ear, but instead they teach us where we need to improve ourselves so we can continue to aspire to the greatness that exists within each of us. Being a serious student of the ancient philosophies is about trusting yourself again, trusting in the intellect that God gifted you with and using it to find yourself and your connection to your creator and divine nature. The hermetic sciences are the first rung of the ladder on your journey back to self. Without a deep understanding of these principles, you are like a ship without a rudder or a compass. Some are slaves of ambition or money, but others are interested in understanding life itself. These give themselves the name of philosophers, and they value the contemplation and discovery of nature beyond all other pursuits.